of the country. And thanks to their common experience, a family for life. But whether they served in lands far away or communities close to home, some of these men and women may face difficult times or even crisis. But sometimes reaching out for help can be the most challenging and worthwhile mission of all for veterans, service members, reserve and national guard. Thankfully, friends, family and communities are standing by their service members and veterans now more than ever. We're all in this together. When you recognize something isn't right, make the call to the Veterans Crisis Line or Military Crisis Line. During times of crisis, reach out and call. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1 or chat online at veteranscrisisline.net or text 838-255. What you want to know. What you need to know. Talk 1470, WNN. Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. AM 1470, WNN. With more of what you need to know, get all the latest on health with caller health questions and comments, breaking health news, the health alternative, outrage, and mystery of the week, Dr. Bob Martin Show, Sundays at 10 a.m. We first opened about 10 years ago. We were, we were small, just a few of us, but it was exciting. I always dreamt of having my own business. It was kind of slow at first, but things started picking up. We had big plans, but in our wildest dreams, we never, never thought we'd have this much work. Yeah, with so many businesses caught off guard by the storm, Reed Waste Management has never been busier. What will become of your business after a disaster? Nearly two-thirds of businesses aren't prepared for an emergency, and 40% of businesses that experience a disaster never recover. Make an emergency plan now before it's too late. For a free online tool that helps you develop an emergency plan to keep your business up and running should disaster strike, visit ready.gov forward slash business. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the American Red Cross, and the Ad Council. If you suffer with diabetes, there's a 25% chance that you'll develop a foot ulcer that can lead to severe health consequences, including amputation. At the sole authority, at little or no cost, you can receive your very own therapeutic shoes and custom inserts. Medicare recipients are entitled to one pair of quality diabetic shoes and three custom inserts. Call the sole authority today, 954-597-7060. Are you thinking about getting your GED diploma? Well, here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we've got a number of pep talks that can motivate you. Sometimes things don't always turn out the way you want them to. You know that feeling? People look at you and don't believe in you. You want some gentle encouragement. Then you're on your way to your GED diploma and a better life. But I know you're probably just a little bit nervous. You can find it in yourself to take that first step. You can improve your future. You can do this. I know you can. You need to start pushing yourself. Now get your game face on and take the first step towards a better life. Hurry up. Don't make me repeat myself. Whatever level of motivation you need to get your GED diploma, we've got a pep talk that's right for you. Call 1-877-38-YOUR-GED or visit yourged.org for your pep talk and find free GED classes in your area. GED is a registered trademark of the American Council on Education. Brought to you by Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Taking over-the-counter or prescription drugs unnecessarily is a drag, whereas feeling great like you used to is the way it ought to be. Learn how to feel, function, and perform to your full health potential. Tune in to the Dr. Bob Martin Show, Sunday morning at 10 on Talk 1470 WNN. Talk health. Talk wealth. Talk politics. Talk 1470. WNN. The opinions expressed in the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show, the place to fine-tune your swing, dress for the course, club, or cruise, and get tips on the best places to play and stay at the right price. Vacation or staycation, host Dan Shube, along with his expert co-hosts and guests, will tell you where to go to play golf and vacation, that is. Now, here's Dan.
Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show. I'm your host, Dan Shub, and tonight, like we always do at this time, we're going to talk a little bit of golf. We will talk some travel, and of course, we've got a great show in store for you tonight. In just a couple of minutes, we will be chatting with our guest, and that would be Hannah De La Cruz, and she is the spokesperson for a website, a dating website, actually, called MissTravel.com. And uh, first of all, I want to find out a little bit more about it because it sounds quite fascinating. But second of all, she has done some research um, to uh, with the folks on her website, some of the members of the site, to find out a little bit about some of their habits while they're on their dating vacations. And uh, this particular survey she did is to find out about how many of them bear all on their trip. In other words, do a little bit of skinny dipping. And I was just curious to find out about it. And hopefully some of you are curious as well. But Obviously, there's more to it than just that, this particular site, and I'm curious to find out uh, how it's going and what kind of matches are taking place and if, uh, what, what success there's been, you know, who's, who's stuck around after that first date in some exotic location. So we'll find out about that in just a bit. And, of course, I've also got some great deals for you all. We'll uh, share them later on the show. Uh, like usual, we've got some that are close to home here in South Florida and others that are clear across the other side of the globe. And um, some travel news as well to keep you up to date as to what's going on so that hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that me or some other people have made and go to the wrong places or use the wrong airlines or just uh, get a bad situation because these trips and vacations that we all take, it's uh, precious money and precious time and we don't want it to go to waste. So hopefully we'll all get educated and learn quite a bit tonight like we always do. And um, usually we start off with a little bit of golf talk, so I think we will do the same uh, today. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to have a chance to play in the next couple of days, which is something that I don't always get a chance to do. Folks think just because I uh, host a golf show or a golf and travel show that I'm always golfing and always traveling. And sometimes that's true, but but not always. And, and with the golf, it kind of comes in spurts. And that's uh, the, the good spurt is happening this uh, this coming week. So first up, I'm going to have an opportunity to stay and play at the Breakers here in Palm Beach, uh, the ocean course, which is quite beautiful. It's a little bit of a shorter course. Space uh, land is at a premium on the island. And uh, I have had the uh, good fortune to play that golf course a couple of times in the past, and it, it's just quite lovely. I, I mean, the entire resort is, is just a beautiful resort, so I recommend it to everybody, and I'm looking forward to getting back out there again and uh, playing with some folks that I, that I work with. So it's always nice to have an opportunity to spend some time in a more relaxed and casual setting than just uh, at the office. So, and then right after that, I am fortunate enough to be able to get in a quick round at a place that I do play quite frequently uh, for me. Um, it's, it's across the street from my office up in Palm Beach Gardens, and that is PGA National Resort. We've spoken to them on the air several times in the past. They've got it all going on up there. They've got five lovely courses. Usually it's the champ course that I get to play. This time that course is being worked on. So I will be playing on their squire course. And I'm sure I must have played it before. They, they've, Like I said, they've got like five courses out there. And I, I think I've played them all at one point or another, but I can't quite recall. So obviously it's been too long. And I am looking forward to getting back out there, and uh, I, I always have a good time playing golf at PGA National Resort. It, it's just a cool place. And, uh, again, I've got people uh, from my day job, uh, from my own department coming into town and staying there, so that's why I'm going to be entertaining out there. But we also have a bunch of people coming into town this week for some meetings at our office, and they will all be staying at PGA National, and they've got deals, depending if you're a Florida resident or not, um, as little as maybe $109 for the day, and uh, they have other deals where I believe for $99, you can play golf, uh, like unlimited golf for the day, and just use the facilities, but you don't actually get a room, but that's still pretty good when you think about playing golf at, at that caliber of club. And their their pool is is just gorgeous. So as as well as their spa. So if you could use the facilities for the day, for ninety nine dollars, including your golf, that's a great deal too. So PGA National Resort and the Breakers, I recommend both of them. Now, something really weird happened to me. I, I was getting my clubs together for for these two rounds of golf and uh, going through my bag, and I noticed that I actually was low on golf balls, and um, also my gloves were kind of falling apart from playing in the heat and the humidity. 
And obviously, typically, I, I go up to the PGA show up in January and uh, talk to all the different manufacturers, and I'm fortunate that a few of them are kind enough to give me a, a sample or two. And it, it usually lasts me through the year. But I found myself in the unfortunate circumstance of uh, not having enough. So on my way down here, I decided that I would pop in. I actually had a couple of gift cards that were given to me. So, uh, again, I, I have some good luck, and, and I'm uh, not embarrassed to say it. But uh, they were given to me from the folks at the PGA Tour Superstore. So I thought I'd um, head down here to the show a little bit early and pop in there and, and see what was going on because you know I, I live up in Martin County, which is, oh, 60, 70 miles north of here. So I really don't get an opportunity to um, check this store out, and I haven't had an opportunity, and I've heard wonderful things about it. So this was, my I'm embarrassed to say, my first time stopping in there. And I was extremely impressed. I mean, first of all, it's huge. They, they've got everything you could possibly imagine for golf as well as for tennis. And just the... Uh, the amount of inventory that they had, the different brands, all the top brands that they carry, uh, some of the sales that they had with some some really good prices, very, very impressive. And I did have a chance to meet with Joe Gorman, the general manager there, very briefly, and uh, nice guy, and, and hopefully in the future we'll have him on the show. He'll come in and maybe uh, comment maybe on the Ryder Cup or some equipment, new equipment for the season or, or something. I'm sure we can find out uh something to use Joe's expertise. So hopefully he'll be kind enough to come on in. So thank you to the PGA Tour Superstore for helping me out with uh, a couple of golf balls and, a, and uh, a new glove so that I can at least look like I know what I'm doing when I'm out there. And, of course, that's always a concern when you don't play very frequently. I guess it's been uh, about four to six weeks since the last time I've been out there. So seems like forever. Um, last week we also, I think, mentioned a little maybe briefly about Nike exiting the uh, equipment business. So, um, probably uh, find some good deals on their equipment pretty soon, so you may want to check that out, although personally I think I, I might uh, pass on that, so we'll see. Um, a couple other things in golf that I did want to touch on. We, we don't typically talk about the tournaments because some folks listen to us uh, on Friday night. Others listen on Sunday on our sister station on WSBR, uh, 6 o'clock, uh, 7.40 a.m. Um, so talking about the tour, sometimes it becomes yesterday's news. Uh, so I don't typically do that too frequently, but there was something that happened last week that was nothing short of amazing, and I tuned in right at the very end and got to catch the end of it, and that was Jim Furyk. He um, shot a 58 uh, on the tour last week, which is the lowest score in the history of the PGA Tour in a competitive round, and it, it's quite remarkable. There are several folks at this point that have shot 59s, and uh, there's one guy, I believe, that has shot a 58 on the web.com tour. But on the PGA Tour, this is a first. And not only that, he is one of the players that also shot a 59. So he's the only player to ever have two rounds under 60 on the PGA Tour. So Jim Furyk, it's like this this guy is, is just amazing. And, 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 and not only that, he's, he's pushing 50. So, he, you know, he's, he's one of the older players on the tour as well. So that unto itself is pretty remarkable. Very, very competitive. Will most likely make it into the Hall of Fame. And then, like two days later, an announcement comes out from the PGA Tour that uh, something that had been decided upon before he shot his 58, that he's was named as the recipient of the 2016 Payne Stewart Award. And the Payne Stewart Award are, is for the guy on the tour that most exemplifies the spirit and the charity and the sportsmanship that Payne Stewart had. And to me, that is just a huge award uh, for whoever gets it. I didn't even realize how much charity work that Mr. Furick does. He he lives in our state, but up in Ponte Vedra, where the PGA Tour is headquartered. And a lot of his work is statewide, but some of it is more localized to, to his area. But the guy is just a saint. He, he does an amazing amount of uh, good work. So kudos, congratulations to Jim Furyk for shooting an incredible round, but but more importantly for the work that he does day in and day out, just uh, doing great things for, for golfers and non-golfers in the communities that we all live in. Um, just just a, a great guy. Um, I also, again, not wanting to talk about stuff that becomes yesterday's news, but I did want to mention that the golf has finally gotten underway in the Olympics. And in spite of the fact that over the past few months we spoke uh, quite a bit about all the players that are not showing up and are not playing, in spite of that, many of the best players in the world are playing, both on the women and on the men's side. So if you do get a chance to tune in, 
um, you might want to, you know, see some of this golf. It's, it's, it's going to be quite good. And, you know, again, a lot of negative stuff reported in the media. I fell prey to it, which is not like me because I typically being in the media don't believe too much about what I hear in the media, but they were talking about these giant rats that are out there on the golf course. Um, and of course all the mosquitoes carrying Zika. Well, we're not quite sure if anybody has been, been bitten by these Zika mosquitoes, but most folks are saying that it doesn't seem to be so bad. And these giant rats, um, I did get to see one on TV and they, they look more like a beaver or something. They're actually quite cute. So to be honest, if they're, you know, that's their natural habitat where they happen to build a golf course and they're roaming around out there. It, it, I don't think it's any worse than the squirrels or the raccoons or any of the other kinds of, uh, um, gophers, you know, that we see out there on the golf course. So I, I think perhaps, um, things were built up a little bit more than they needed to be. And so far everything seems to be going smooth. And I hope by the time it's all said and done that it continues that way. And I hope that, uh, next time around that golf is still part of the Olympics and more of the players can show up and play and, uh, We'll see what happens. So we'll, we'll talk about it after the fact. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping for the best. All right. I think what we're going to do is take our first quick break and then we're going to be back with a little bit of travel news prior to our first guest, uh, Hannah Dela Cruz from mistravel.com. You won't want to miss that. So stay tuned for more of the golf and travel show. We'll be right back. And we are back. Time for a quick message from our sponsor, Labor Finders. If your business needs industrial workers or if you're looking for work, you got to call Labor Finders. Labor Finders places for temporary or temporary to hire opportunities for skilled, semi-skilled or general labor positions such as plumbers, electricians, concrete workers, forklift operators, hospitality workers, office clerical folks and so much more. Labor Finders has almost 200 offices nationwide. Near here in Boca Raton, they have offices in Homestead, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, and in Jupiter. So if you need legal, insured, hard workers, or if you're looking for work, call Labor Finders toll-free at 800-864-7749. That's 800-864-7749, or visit laborfinders.com. And we are back. Uh, cool song I dug up from my past uh, NRBQ, Driving in My Car. And some of you may decide on your vacation that driving in your car is a better option because there's certainly been some trouble in the air, and we will let you know what's going on. And I was hearing about this story firsthand as it was happening this uh, past Monday. My daughter was in San Antonio and scheduled to fly back to uh, Palm Beach International, And she had an early morning flight about 8 o'clock or so. And I woke up in the morning, put on the news to find out that Delta is having major issues, that uh, they lost their power, their computers went down, and pretty much worldwide their flights are at a standstill. And, of course, my daughter was flying on Delta. She was flying from San Antonio to Atlanta and from Atlanta to PBI. And, boy, was that a rough time for her. It, it, she, she finally got out of San Antonio and got to Atlanta about three or four hours delayed and then got stuck in Atlanta with very long delays there as well. Ended up taking off at two in the morning from Atlanta, landing around 4 a.m. here. So it, it took about 20 hours for her to get from San Antonio to Florida. And she was not too happy. I know somebody else who, a similar story, he had a direct flight from New York to PBI and also delayed uh, 
well, many, many hours. He got, got in a little bit earlier than my daughter. And believe it or not, uh, today is Friday and, um, last I heard, they still had, I mean, I think on Wednesday, I know they had some canceled flights. I'm not sure about yesterday and if they've ended it all yet, but that seems like a real long time to work out a, a six hour power failure. And I really started to worry or, or think about this. And it's like, I mean, my business is much smaller than Delta. We've got a generator. Um, you know, we can't afford for our systems to go down and, and leave all of our customers in the lurch. How is it that airlines can have such antiquated systems? And it seems the more I read about it, that many airlines have antiquated systems that have rather than been totally, um, you know, changed out for new updated stuff. They just keep adding and adding and adding on to old systems. And every single part of an airline is dependent upon these computers. It's it's not just, uh, you know, reservations and ticketing. But just the total operation, everything is, goes through a computer. So when a computer goes down, they are in big trouble. And, of course, so are their customers. Um, the good news is is they did uh, send a text message to my daughter offering her a couple of hundred dollars worth of credit without her having to ask for anything, which is kind of nice. Of course, before she received that, her comment to me was, is, I'll never fly them again. So obviously them trying to entice their customers to come back with uh, a, a nice little bonus like that is a is a good thing for them. And to be honest with you, out of all of the major carriers, the traditional carriers, lately Delta, I thought, was, you know, performing halfway decent. So it just kind of shows you that it's all relative. You know, I, I could fly five times and have a great experience, but my daughter flies once and has a disaster and she hates Delta and will never fly them again. So, you know, they're, they're all only as good for the most part as their most recent experience, unless, um, like myself with Southwest, I'm a big fan of theirs. And if they mess up, I kind of give them a second chance because they, you know, I've flown them successfully so many times and they, they too have recently had some labor strife and, and their computers went down. And their pilots uh, or some of their other workers who were on strike, they were demanding the, the head of the CEO, which it didn't happen. Um, but supposedly their computer systems are a little bit old and, and uh, antiquated as well. So I know that the airlines, when they started to pocket a lot of money when our public was flying and the price of fuel went down, that they were reinvesting a lot of that money into new uh, aircraft. And um, for a long time, they didn't lower their their fares. More recently, their fares have come down. But I can't imagine what the kinds of uh, millions or billions of dollars that they rake in, especially when times are good for them, that they can't afford to update something that's so crucial to the operation and the safety of their system. Uh, of course, they always say to you that safety is their number one priority, and I suppose it is. But when computers go down, anything can happen. So... I urge Delta and all of the airlines to take some of those profits and, and take another look and, and see if uh, there's more that they can do about um, upgrading their technology. Uh, I, I think it's really important. Um, and speaking about Southwest, my, my favorite uh, airline, they are adding some flights uh, beginning on March 9th. They will be adding service from right here in Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale Airport to Newark. And Newark has always been, uh, you know, uh, an airport that they have not worked with, uh, a stronghold for, um, I guess, United. It used to be Continental, now now United. JetBlue is expanding some flights there. Um, also, Spirit is expanding flights there. It seems to be a hot location. And, it, I mean, it's good for me. I, I do get up to New York frequently, and depending upon where I'm going in New York, I have been known to fly to Islip on Long Island, JFK, uh, LaGuardia, or Newark. And, I kind of, um, I, I like flying out to Islip. It's hard to get there other than on Southwest if I'm going to be on Long Island. But if I am doing things in Manhattan, um, I do like any of those other airports. LaGuardia, it's getting a lot of renovations now, so maybe not the best choice. But JFK is pretty cool because you can take the train from that airport and get either to Long Island or to Manhattan or any of the other boroughs uh, via the subway. Um, but also Newark has the ability for you to go by train into Penn Station in New York. So that's kind of cool, too. Renting cars can be very, very expensive in the New York City area. And um, parking cars, if you stay in Manhattan, could be extremely expensive. I'm talking about like a minimum of uh, $60 a night to park your car. So um, 
you know, if, if you could fly into airports that have public transportation that are easy and, and keep in mind too, I mean, anybody could take an airport limo or a taxi, but with the traffic in that, uh, region, uh, being able to take the train is really cool. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that Southwest is, is doing that. Um, also talking about expansions, um, this is an airline that I don't know a lot about and I haven't flown. But they are expanding. They are Germany's second largest carrier, which is Air Berlin. And they are adding, um, making their eighth U.S. destination, Orlando, which is going to be now joining Miami, Chicago, O'Hare, Fort Myers, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Boston. So they will um, have a combined total of 78 weekly nonstop flights from the U.S., uh, between the U.S. and Berlin and Dusseldorf. So, and of course, once you're over there in Europe, there are so many low-cost carriers that if you would like to see um, some places in Germany, but then go on to other places in Europe, it's very, very easy to uh, get inexpensive connections to multiple places in Europe. And I, I, we've got a deal that I'll be talking about later in the show that I actually was researching because it's a place that I want to go to, and I couldn't believe how inexpensive that particular deal was. It wasn't Air Berlin. It was a, a different carrier. So um, it, it'll be interesting. So this service from Orlando is beginning in May, and uh, it'll be five times a week from Dusseldorf and um also, they're going to have uh, service that they're starting in May between Berlin and L.A. too and Berlin and San Francisco. So a lot of growth for Air Berlin. And uh, we'll keep an eye on it. I'll try and get some reviews and, and find out how they're doing. Another story that uh, we've been covering um, that is local in nature as well as uh, a big story with the Olympics, and that would be the Zika virus. And... Obviously, it is a major concern to Florida, a major concern to our economy. Our uh, Governor Scott has been extremely proud of the fact that he's created so many jobs in this state, but many of them are part of tourism. And if Zika has a, an effect or a major effect on tourism, a lot of those jobs could go by the wayside as well as all sorts of tax revenue. And, um, you know, businesses obviously will be hurt tremendously. And I'm not just talking about the hotels and the airlines, but the restaurants and the shops and the, the cruise lines and, and you name it, if people don't want to come to South Florida or Florida at all. So I saw a story and I, I read this in a, on a website called Travel Weekly. So this is a, um, a site that's for, for travel industry folks. And I, I really found it a little bit hard to believe. Um, you know, we had said that most of the outbreak was in the Wynwood neighborhood, which is just north of downtown. And it was, um, you know, very, very limited. And it seems that there has been some research done in other countries as well as in the Keys whereby they've been testing genetically modified mosquitoes. And it seems that these genetically modified mosquitoes, once they get out there and I guess they do what they do with other mosquitoes and they, they mate or whatever, they the, the end result of that is mosquitoes that are not um, able to spread viruses such as Zika. And... Um, you know, when I was, it, it seems that it's it's worked really well in these foreign countries that have done it, and I mean, it, it sounds kind of weird. Um, people were against it at first, but I suppose when faced with something like Zika, which could be so devastating, folks uh, have a little bit more of an open mind. But you know, I know a lot of people are not into like genetically engineered food products; they're against that, and you know, not everybody's into cloning and messing around with animals. Um, I don't know. I, I, the first thought that I had, it just reminded me of like maybe some like horror movie from back in the day, you know, where, uh, you know, Mothra or Godzilla is invading Tokyo or something. And, you know, some, something went awry in the, in the test tube in, in the laboratory. And before you know it, you got mosquitoes that are, you know, just huge and, and terrorizing and flying off with small children. And it's just some horror story. So I, I don't know. But uh, hopefully I'm wrong. It, it just sounded a little bit weird to me. And uh, hopefully this will work before this Zika thing gets gets really bad. I, I believe that there's also a lot of other work um, going on as far as uh, being able to have some sort of vaccine or some sort of uh, medication to treat it as well. They're They're working real hard on it. I know that the president, uh, President Obama, was upset because Congress was taking a vacation and uh, he was a little bit upset because there was some legislation on Zika that he wanted to get through. And um, so maybe when they come back from their vacation, they'll decide that this is uh, a little bit more important then. And as I said earlier, I was kind of happy to hear that this virus has not um, seemed to 
uh, be a big deal in Rio and hasn't seemed to affect the Olympics. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But it, it is a scary thing, and uh, I understand why folks who are traveling.